everybody knows what the Constitution says. We also know the qualifications it gives. Therefore, we as much know the answers to the rhetorical questions we are asking. Number one, before the demonstrations took place, we were told the demonstrators would storm State House. Which part of the Constitution or law was that in compliance with? We were also warned profusely that we were not to come to town on that day unless we were participating in the demonstrations. Again, we are asking, which part of the law was that one? Then we were told on that particular day, you open your businesses at your own peril because if you sell water on that day, please note, if you are not selling, you are giving us for free. If you are selling sodas on that day, you are not selling, you are giving us for free. Now, the question is this. Is that lawful? Would we be giving our merchandise to demonstrators for no pay? Isn't that looting? So we were warned up front that these demonstrations would not be peaceful, as a result of which most of the Kenyans kept out of town, most of the Kenyans were not able to go to job, and what happened was those demonstrators who wanted to cause chaos and violence came to town. We all saw them. They were actually armed, and nobody is refusing that because we would see them pelting policemen with the stones. Is that peaceful? Can that be said to be within the parameters of the law, the Constitution, and the statutes that deal with picketing? Let's not deceive ourselves. If this is what is going to continue, we have no problem. But we will continue to commend the police for doing a good job because they will actually reiterate and they will deal with those who are causing chaos and violence with all the means they are given under the law to execute that. Number two, three reasons are being given by the demonstrators or their leaders. That number one, we have to open the servers. The question is, I sat in the Supreme Court when an express order was made that to the requirement of the petitioners, the servers would be opened. They were opened, the court made a report, and there was absolutely nothing to fault up. What else are we trying to search in those servers? Number two, the second point that is being raised is high cost of living, and we agree. The cost of living is high. But this did not happen six months ago. It has happened over the years. We should be sitting down to know the cost of the high cost of living and the various methods we can use to actually uh, ameliorate that situation. One of them is reduce the cost of input when it comes to production so that you are able to get better prices. Instead of doing so, we are being told, go to the streets and tomorrow the president will stand up and they say, price of unga is 70 shillings. We may have to live a little bit longer before such a pronouncement is made. The third point being raised is IEBC, that unless we are able to structure IEBC, there will be demonstrations. IEBC is provided for by the Constitution. Number two, we have a statute, the IEBC Act. The appointments that are taking place are in strict compliance with what that law says. How can we then fault a law which we have put into place unless we want ourselves to overthrow our own rule of law. Actually, these demonstrations are not bona fides. They are political. They are what we are calling economic sabotage because some people feel the only way to try and uh, ruin the government we have today is by doing what they are doing today. They should be condemned and the police should be enabled to deal with those demonstrations the way the law provides. So I do support 